All right, thanks folks for uh, finishing up that CISO presentation and coming on over. Uh, my name's Eric Sachs. I'm responsible for Google's overall identity team, but uh, let me just do quick introductions of our other two folks. Uh, actually, who's next on site? Shashank, why don't you go next? Hey, hi, uh, I'm Shashank. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, <coughs> hi folks, I'm Shashank. I'm from the Google Identity Ent Enterprise Identity team. I'm the product manager and I look after the various enterprise sort of IDAS services that are being offered. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Great. And Hi, everyone. I'm Christian Brand. I'm part of the team responsible for authentication at Google. OK, now I'll kick you guys off. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we'll bring them back later. That's allowed. Uh, so if there's only one thing you all remember from the deck today, just four little words. Uh, there is a website where we've always published our decks, videos, material from CIS conferences and other conferences. Actually, if you go there, you'll find slide decks and videos going back about eight years. Uh, I've actually run Google's identity team on both the consumer and enterprise side uh, for 12 plus years. But again, a lot of interesting material back there. And I'll bring up those words again later if you don't remember them, but hopefully there's not that hard. Uh, so I want to talk to you today. I'm going to first talk about the enterprise stuff, consumer stuff, and then I'm going to mention some of the mix of sessions that we've already done or have done. Um, just as a reminder of slide decks you might want to go back and look at. Uh, let me start with the enterprise side. How many people went to the CISO keynote that just happened like 30 minutes ago? Okay, big group who are beating up passwords. Uh, well, in Google space in the enterprise area, we're most well known for our SaaS offering for Gmail and Docs. But as part of that, one of the areas we've tried to differentiate is through security, especially account security. Uh, when we first launched that, this was doing risk-based login security, starting to use phone numbers. Uh, soon after that, you know, one of the first players to do two-factor authentication. And then a little bit after that was doing the introduction of security keys. And Christian is going to talk about some pretty big improvement in security keys because in that keynote, what y'all may have heard is, yes, multi-factor auth is an improvement. It's a, a little bit of a security you know, increase. However, what we've seen is fishers are getting uh, better, and they fish in users for OTPs about as easily as they do for passwords. So the security benefit we got out of that was limited. So Christian is going to come up with a bit and talk about how we're going to help uh, enterprises not even worry about phishing anymore. Phishing and passwords, OTPs will just make that go away so you don't have to worry about that. So. Uh, one of the other things that we found is in the past, people really only thought about buying Google's enterprise services for Gmail, for Docs. But as if we've headed down the route of doing even stronger authentication to the point of this sort of unfishable authentication, we're now getting even more interest from enterprises who are like, you know what, Google, I'm not sure I even need to pay for your Gmail Docs. I'm happy with the offerings I have. Uh, but the level of account security you're doing, especially this unfishable stuff, that's where we're actually seeing a lot of interest from enterprises who just want to sign up for that. And Christian will talk about how we're starting to take pilot customers for that, and you'll see more investment in that area in the future. But the other one is, you know, companies don't want to just have unfishable protection for their employee uses of Google AdWords or Analytics or GCP. Uh, they're also looking to protect their own IT apps and SaaS apps. So Shashank is going to come up and talk about uh, how once your employees have been authenticated in this manner, you can federate out from there using our OpenID and SAML and SKIM support to other IT apps and SaaS apps. Uh, but if you have even more complicated needs in that space, uh, we have partnerships we've announced with Ping and Okta where you can use us to do this incredibly strong authentication of your employees, but then still chain it down through Okta or PingFed or Ping1 out to other IT apps or SaaS apps where you have more complicated requirements. So they'll come up and talk about that in the enterprise space. Now, in the consumer space, we also have a bunch of sessions this week. Uh, again, in the consumer area, we try to differentiate ourselves with the level of account security we have. And to be honest, you know, hopefully in a couple months we will publish some of this, but the percentage of our active accounts that got hijacked is insanely small. You're more likely to get hit by a car than to have your Google account hijacked at this point. So the you know, security of that has been great, and we've seen an increasing number of sites adding login with Google buttons to bring that security to other sites and apps. But we also have other toolkits that app developers have been able to use, uh, like SmartLock for passwords and Firebase Auth. Uh, there was a session earlier today, and the slide's already up online, where you're talking about how to use all these different tools, how to plug them into your website, some really impressive figures about huge improvements in sign-up and sign-in rates for consumer applications using all these tricks. Uh, that is good. However, 
Uh, th these things get a little bit more complicated. Smart lock for passwords is this relatively new technique, been out for about a year, that has brought a lot of the improvements to these registration rates, but it involves significant UX changes uh, to a site to take advantage of these optimizations. And unfortunately, over the last five years, one of the things we've concluded is it's just too much work for application developers, website owners, to develop a login system that uses all these UX optimizations and all these security optimizations. So I mentioned that Google Internet Identity Research Site. If you go there, you will see best practices out the wazoo we have been trying to write to try to see could developers pull this stuff off themselves. Uh, and what we've actually concluded is they can't. It's just not realistic. So I'm going to be giving a keynote tomorrow, and I'll be talking and promoting the idea that businesses for the consumer-facing login system really should be picking an identity as a service vendor who will do all this for them. And by all this, I mean dealing with passwords, change passwords, maybe a login with Facebook button, maybe a login with Google button, iOS, Android, web, mobile web, et cetera. Just outsource all that complexity to people who can bring a lot of this user value, business value, and security value to your application. Now, in Google's case, uh, we've actually had a offering in this space for a number of years called the Google Identity Toolkit, and it was sort of a hedging of our bets. We were trying to figure out, was the do-it-yourself approach going to be better, or were we going to have to go this IDAS approach? Uh, we've decided so strongly to go down this IDAS approach that at Google I.O., we actually rebranded the offering uh, under the Firebase Auth brand. Firebase is Google's brand we're using for a lot of our application developer-facing features. And there's going to be a session at 4.30 p.m. today if you want to learn more detail about that as well as about the smart lock feature. Uh, let me quickly mention some other sessions that we've already had and for which either the decks are available or videos will be available after CIS is done. Uh, did any of you all come to hear Coca-Cola or Netflix talk earlier today? Okay, great. So in uh, Netflix's case, they were talking about how they were using uh, Google as their enterprise IDP, both for Google services, for IT apps, for SaaS apps. They're also one of the people playing around with the security key support to not worry about phishing anymore. Coca-Cola was talking about their use of Google Cloud Platform, but was also discussing the identity issues of that. How do they synchronize information about their uh, developers to Google, to use Google Cloud Platform? Uh, syncing group information, how do you deal with authorization, et cetera? So that was a packed audience in here. Uh, another session we had this morning was about some security issues around doing single sign-in in, in mobile devices. So how many people have heard the term NAPS or AppAuth? Okay, well, that's actually pretty good. Uh, if you haven't and you're involved in developing a mobile app that does single sign-on, uh, you're probably creating security problems for yourselves. And unfortunately, a ton of apps are doing this. Uh, if you've ever opened a mobile app and clicked a uh, federated login button for your employee login system or Facebook or Google and had to log in again there, that's horrific from a usability perspective, also horrific from a security perspective. Uh, there are new best practices, internet standards to avoid that on iOS and Android. We were talking about that today. Uh, but the other thing we were you know, warning application developers is that from a security perspective, we don't consider it acceptable to use this type of embedded web view approach. And so you're going to see us over time starting to require in more and more cases uh, doing it with a much more uh, security friendly posture using techniques like app auth and apps. Uh, another session that we did was on shared signals. If any of you all attended Microsoft's keynote yesterday, uh, Alex was talking about a number of things and brought up Adam Dawes from Google's team to talk about how we're sharing information from Microsoft when they see a Hotmail account compromised to Google because maybe that Hotmail account uses Google Drive or YouTube or some other service, and it helps us recognize, okay, maybe we need to protect that account better. Uh, there was a Q&A session yesterday with a number of different participants and the standards working groups in this space, also dealing with privacy issues. Uh, if you want to follow that, there weren't slides, but the OpenID Risk Working Group is a good one to look into, and there's also an OASIS work group in the similar area. So that's just a, a quick run through of different, uh, different sessions coming up, different sessions that we've already had. Uh, we also have about 20 Googlers uh, at our booth, so come by, uh, ask us questions. We'll be here for a long time and really enjoy, honestly, getting feedback from this group about what we should be doing the next year. We're not looking to tell you just what we have already done. Uh, Y'all are, for a long time, been the best source of telling us what should be the priorities of our team going forward the next year. Uh, but again, if you want to you know, take a look at these slides or other material we have, uh, that's a plus place to go and get the decks. But let me now uh, have Christian come up and tell us how you can stop worrying about phishing of passwords and OTPs for your employees. Thanks. <laughs>